in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 10th of november wednesday of the 32nd week in ordinary time this day is marked as world science day for peace and development and today we celebrate the memorial of saint leo the great pope and doctor over to larissa november 10th is the roman catholic church's liturgical memorial of the 5th century pope saint leo the first known as saint leo the great whose involvement in the fourth ecumenical council helped prevent the spread of error on Christ's divine and human natures. Saint Leo intervened for the safety of the church in the West as well, persuading Attila the Hun to return back from Rome. Eastern Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians also maintain a devotion to the memory of Pope Saint Leo the Great. Churches of the Byzantine tradition celebrate his feast day on February 18th. as the nickname soon attributed to him by tradition suggests he was truly one of the greatest pontiffs to have honored the roman see and made a very important contribution to strengthening its authority and prestige leo's origins are obscure and his date of birth unknown his ancestors are said to have come from tuscany though the future pope may have been born in that region or in rome itself He became a deacon in Rome in approximately 430 during the pontificate of Pope Celestine I. During this time, central authority was beginning to decline in the western portion of the Roman Empire. At some point between 432 and 440, during the reign of Pope Saint Celestine's successor, Pope Sixtus III, The Roman Emperor Valentinian III commissioned Leo to travel to the region of Gaul and settle a dispute between military and civil officials. Pope Sixtus III died in 440, and like his predecessor Celestine was canonized as a saint, Leo, away on his diplomatic mission at the time of the Pope's death, was chosen to be the next Bishop of Rome. Reigning for over two decades, he sought to preserve the unity of the church in its profession of faith and to ensure the safety of his people against frequent barbarian invasions leo used his authority in both doctrinal and disciplinary matters against a number of heresies troubling the western church including pelagianism involving the denial of original sin and manichaeism a gnostic system that saw matter as evil In the same period many eastern christians had begun arguing about the relationship between jesus's humanity and divinity as early as 445 leo had intervened in this dispute in the east which threatened to split the churches of alexandria and constantinople its eventual resolution was in fact rejected in some quarters leading to the present day split between eastern orthodoxy and the so-called non-chancedonian churches which accepted only three ecumenical councils as the 5th century christological controversy continued the pope urged the gathering of an ecumenical council to resolve the matter at the council of chalcedon in 451 the pope's teaching was received as authoritative by the eastern bishops who proclaimed Peter has spoken through the mouth of Leo. Leo's teaching confirmed that Christ's eternal divine personhood and nature did not absorb or negate the human nature that he assumed in time through the incarnation. Instead, 
the proper character of both natures was maintained and came together in a single person. So without leaving his father's glory behind, the Son of God comes down from his heavenly throne and enters the depths of our world, the Pope taught. Whilst remaining pre-existent, he begins to exist in time. The Lord of the Universe veiled his measureless majesty and took on a servant's form. The God who knew no suffering did not despise becoming a suffering man and deathless as he is to be subject to the laws of death. In 452, one year after the Council of Chalcedon, Pope Leo led a delegation which successfully negotiated with the barbarian king Attila to prevent an invasion of Rome. When the Vandal leader Genseric occupied Rome in 455, the Pope confronted him unarmed and obtained a guarantee of safety for many of the city's inhabitants and the churches to which they had fled. Pope St. Leo the Great died on November 10, 461. He was proclaimed a doctor of the church by Pope Benedict XIV in 1754. A large collection of his writings and sermons survives and can be read in translation today. Placing all our petitions before St. Leo today, let us pray. O God, who never allowed the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we continue our reflection on the Gospel of Luke. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with the loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, if the Samaritan leper in today's reading could have written in his diary about the day Jesus healed him, it just might possibly read something like this. No one will believe what just happened to me. My open sores and decaying skin have been completely healed. I was so sick for so long, but now I am perfectly fine. I can't help but jump and dance with joy. As awesome as it is, though my healing 
seems to go far beyond the physical for inside of my very self i feel changed and restored the unlimited mercy the unconditional and unmerited love of god has been poured out upon me and my heart is filled to the point of bursting i am filled with gratitude and thanksgiving to jesus for what he has done i can do nothing now but return to the one who healed me and give him thanks but even that doesn't seem to be enough i want to get to know this fellow follow him and his disciples and learn all i can from him about the god whose love he poured into my heart very few if any of us will need to be healed from leprosy but we are all in need of other forms of healing perhaps we don't recognize this need as we have been formed by the world to look only to our physical well-being perhaps too we have simply accepted and settled for an easier version of the christian life one that doesn't demand change but doesn't promise much transformation either or maybe it could be that a lack of openness to god may be limiting our experience of the many healings that he wants to give us brother and sister take some time today to review all that jesus has done in your life let yourself be amazed like the fellow in today's reading at his kindness mercy and generosity toward you then open your heart to let jesus fill you today with even more of the grace that he has already given you Lord you want to heal us just as much as you did when you walked the earth help me to seek the grace necessary for these healings to take place fill me lord with all it what you have already done amen brothers and sisters the psalm continues this admonition to those who are leaders the princes or tribal lords are challenged to act with the justice and fairness for god is aware of the needs of the lowly and will be upset if those in control do not meet those needs The psalmist reminds the princes that they too are also children of God and are not more important than those whom they lead. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response Arise O God judge the earth. Arise O God judge the earth. Do justice for the weak and the orphan. Give justice to the poor and afflicted. Rescue the weak and the needy. Set them free from the hand of the wicked. Arise, O God, judge the earth. I have said to you, you are gods, and all of you sons of the most high. And yet like men you shall die you shall fall like any of the princes arise o god judge the earth glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen brothers and sisters Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you. 
the father and the son and the holy spirit amen brothers and sisters we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday today especially brother pascal amosi and brother rickson morris both are carmelites brother roger fernandez from pune andrew evelyn sikvera from yayadi mangalore Aaron Blaze Roger from Kumta presently in Dubai Delvin Seravo from Wakola Mumbai Bakita Rose Pinto from Derlakatte Mangalore wish you all a happy birthday god bless you Robert and Matilda Pinto from Mangalore Lancy and Victoria from Malad Mumbai Rock and Dorothy Fernandez from Goa Sieta and Samson Martis from Canada are celebrating their wedding anniversary today congratulations dear friends may god bless your family life and we pray for the departed soul of Felix Babla Miranda from Mudbidre Mangalore may the lord grant him eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.